Hello everyone, good afternoon. Welcome back to your history class. Today we'll learn a new chapter and that is chapter 5. It's all about the Vedic Age. Okay, so Vedic Age is subdivided into two. Number one is Early Vedic Age, 1500 to 1000 BCE. And then number two is Later Vedic Age, which is from 1000 to 600 BCE. The last chapter we started about the Harappan civilization, the early cities in the subcontinent of India, right? And we had known that it had, had declined around 1800 BCE. And during that time, people began living a simple life in villages. So during that time also, there were some people who entered India from the Northwest and they called themselves Arya, meaning noble ones. A new culture developed in India when they entered. Uh, they did not come to India to invade and plunder, but instead they came for agriculture. Okay, so how did we come to know about the Aryans? It is through, through the study of Vedas. So the Vedic age gets its name from the four Vedas. And historians had studied this text carefully and they had provided insight into the life during the Vedic age. Okay, so among the four Vedas, the oldest one is Rig Veda, which was composed around 1500 BCE, and it is a collection of 1,028 hymns written by Rishis. So these hymns are in praise of various gods and goddesses. Okay, so these hymns were considered sacred. For hundreds of years, the Rig Veda was passed down by word of mouth, and then later on, it was written in Sanskrit. And then the other three Vedas were written later, which will tell us about the later Vedic age. So here we are talking about the Aryans language. Okay, so we call Aryans language as Indo-European and it's actually the ancestor of Sanskrit, Assamese, Gujarati and many other foreign languages like Latin, Greek, German and Persian. So, in India, the languages used in the Northeast belong to, the, to that tibeto burman family. Tamil and Tilogu belongs to that Dravidian family. Okay, so here is Krishna Dwaipayana Vyasa has been attributed to have compiled the Vedas which were in oral tradition before. To understand the Vedic Age, we need to understand further the early Vedic Age from 1500 BCE to 1000 BCE. Okay, so to know about this period, we need to study its political organization, the status of women at that time, their economic life, and then their religion. Okay, so the early Vedic Age was a time period in which the Aryans first entered India. Okay, and then the chief source of information during this period was Rig Veda, the oldest Veda. Okay, so how was the political organization at that time? The kingdom was tribal in character, and then they called their tribal chief as Rajan. So the function of Rajan at that time, he rules actually over the people or Jana, and his position was not hereditary. He did not live in palace and did not collect uh, regular taxes. His function was to protect the people and lead the army to victory in battle. Battles were fought for land, which was essential for agriculture and for pastures for the cattle. Okay, so the Rajan at that time was also called Gupati or Lord of Cattle. And then he used to receive Bali. Bali meaning voluntary offering from the people. And his power was kept in check by assemblies such as Saba and Samiti. The king dispensed his duties with the help of the Purohita or religious advisor and then Sinani, the army chief. Now, how was the status of the women at that time? Okay, so the women at that time were treated equally and they were even allowed to some choices in the selection of their husbands. So that basically it's not arranged marriage. And then they also were educated. Child marriage and sati did not exist and widows also were not treated badly. And then they also participated in sabha rituals and even chariot races. To the Rig Veda, during this time period, 
has many hymns composed by women, and there are references to women sages as well. Now, economic life during the early Vedic age. So at that time, the Aryans did not have any fixed territories. That means they moved from place to place. And then later on, they began to settle down and practice agriculture. So cattle were their most valuable possession and chief form of their wealth. And then other than agriculture and cattle rearing, there were many other professions. And at that time, people were also engaged in trading. So at that time also, ships were used by early Vedic people. The Rig Veda speaks of ships with a hundred oars. Okay, religion during the early Vedic age. So at that time, people worshipped the forces of nature. Much of the Rig Veda is full of prayers for these deities. So the important gods at that time were Indra, Varun, Surya, Vishnu, Vayu, and Yama. And for the goddesses, there were Usha, Savitri, and Prithvi. Their favor could be won by sacrifices. During that time, they did not make temples or idols, and their worship was through prayers and chanting Vedic mantras. So here in this map, actually you can see this clearly in the book. So the pink one here is actually the early Vedic age civilization. Now second time period, it's later Vedic age from 1000 to 600 BCE. Once again, to know about this time period, we need to study its political organization, the status of women. And then here we have caste system during this time period, and then their economic life at that time, and then their religion. Okay, later Vedic age. So this time period was between 1000 to 600 BCE and we're able to know about this time period through the composed books. These are Samaveda, Yajurveda, and Atharva Veda. So Samaveda is a, actually a collection of musical verses from the Rig Veda. Yajurveda contains mantras and rituals for sacrifice. Atharva Veda contains chants to cure diseases and ward off danger. And at the same time, the epics Mahabharata and Ramayana were also written during this age. Because of these two epics, this uh, later Vedic age is also called Epic Age. Now political organization. So at that time, each tribe already had fixed territory. And tribes often fought over territories. So at that time, the term Rashtra, which indicates territory, first appeared in this period. Further, the king at that time were very powerful, and his position became hereditary. He lived in a luxurious life in a palace, and he also received regular taxes in the forms of grains and cattle. And then he could be able to appoint officers as well to collect taxes. He maintained law and order, and all major decisions were taken by him. Now the Saba and Samiti assisted him, but did not curtail his power. He performed various Sacrifices to prove his strength and power. Now status of women. So there was a drastic change in terms of women at that time. Women at that time were no longer educated or they were not even allowed to read the Vedas. And then they were not participating in the rituals or the Sabha. Child marriage and Sati came into existence. And for the remarriage of widows were strongly opposed at that time. And then the women were already under the control of their father and husband. Now, caste system was developed in this time period. So let me read this with you. The caste system developed gradually. The Aryans made the defeated Dasas do unpleasant work. Division was created between the Dasas and the fair-skinned Aryans. So the Dasas were given the name Shudras and were not allowed to take part in any Aryan ceremony. Hence, the caste system consisting of the four castes came into being, the Brahmins, the Kshatriyas, the Vaishyas, and the Shudras. Now, what about their economic life at that time? So agriculture became very important. There were already copper, bronze, and iron implements. And then the main crops were wheat, rice, and barley. Artisans produced better goods, weaving. Weaving also started, and it was widely practiced by women. And then the religion. 
new gods were worshipped and then Prajapati, the creator, was most important at that time. He was later called Brahma. Shiva and Vishnu were also worshipped and then they were already worshipping idols at that time and then sacrifices were performed to please the gods who then blessed the people. Next is megaliths. So the word megalith comes from the Greek words megas and lithos meaning great stone. So megaliths are large slabs of stone used to mark the burial sites. So at that time burying dead bodies were already practiced. Numerous megaliths have been found in Karnataka, Andhra Pradesh, Maharashtra, Kerala, Kashmir, and the Northeast. So in a megalithic burial, the bones of a dead person were placed in an urn. So this urn was buried and surrounded by a circle of large vertical stones. A large horizontal stone formed a capstone. So if the pit burial has a circle of large stones, it is called a pit circle. If the pit had a heap of stones piled on top, it is called a kern. So the one in red dots here are the megalithic sites in India. So here is the megalithic site and unlike the Neolithic burials, megalithic burials were actually away from the occupation area. That is all for today. Thank you very much for watching the entire video.